My name is Father Tony. Welcome to our virtual pilgrimage to seven churches. This wonderful tradition began with St. Philip Neri in the 16th century. After the Mass of the Last Supper on Holy Thursday, the faithful are asked to stay awake, watch and pray with Jesus in the Holy Eucharist. As we remember the arrest, torture, and crucifixion of Jesus. The visitation to the seven churches corresponds to the seven stations Jesus made from the Last Supper to his crucifixion on the cross. The seven stations are Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane, Luke chapter 22, Jesus bound and taken before Annas, John chapter 18, Jesus taken before the high priest Caiaphas, Matthew chapter 26. Jesus taken to Pilate, the governor, John chapter 18. Jesus taken before Herod, Luke chapter 23. Jesus taken once again to Pilate, Matthew chapter 27. And Jesus crowned with thorn and led to his crucifixion, Matthew chapter 27. As we journey tonight, we will pause at each church and say a brief meditation. So let us begin as we journey with Jesus to churches throughout the world. Our first stop will be at the National Basilica of the Immaculate Conception. The first station, Jesus agonizes in the Garden of Gethsemane. Jesus asks us to watch, wait, and pray. Too often, we instead act as Judas, his betrayer. Forgive us, Lord Jesus. Please grant us the graces we need to stay alert and pray always. Let us go now to the beautiful Sanctuary of Lord's friends which was built to honor Our Lady's request to St. Bernadette. We will enter the large church that is built underground and better serves the large number of pilgrims who continually visit the sanctuary.
Segunda estación, Jesús es llevado ante Anas. Te arrestaron por codicia, orgullo y envidia, Jesús. Ayúdanos a despojarnos de la ambición de poder, riqueza y honor para recorrer tu camino de amor. Now we visit St. Peter's Basilica. Underneath Bernini's magnificent canopy is the main altar. At this altar, the popes have celebrated significant events in the church's history. St. Peter's Basilica is the largest Catholic church in the world. It's never been easier to visit St. Peter's Basilica. Forget the long lines and wait times. All you need is a computer and internet. The website of Vatican City offers access to 10 spectacular 360-degree views. Let us start our tour with Bernini's famous Chair of St. Peter, located at the apse of the Basilica. The chair is crowned by this image of a white dove, representing the Holy Spirit surrounded by golden angels. Surely you have never been so close to the altar before. From here, the popes throughout history have chaired the most important liturgical celebrations. Looking up, you will see the elaborate details on St. Peter's baldachin, a large sculpted bronze canopy. Furthermore, we can view the length of the nave and find it to be the largest Catholic church in the world. Plus, if you have never traveled to Rome around Christmas time, the tour allows you access to the Basilica's nativity display or a close-up look at one of its most popular sculptures, the Pieta by Michelangelo. Another must-see attraction is St. Peter's Basilica lit up at nighttime. If you look to the right, you can see the papal residence. The two illuminated windows belong to the Pope's office and his bedroom. Of course, no tour is complete without visiting one of the most popular sites within the Vatican Museums, the Sistine Chapel. You can admire the vault with great detail to follow, step by step, the history of creation, including the well-known fresco that depicts God giving life to Adam. Looking ahead, you will see the representation of Michelangelo's Last Judgment near the altar. On the lateral walls, you will find Bible episodes, on the right, about the life of Jesus, and on the left, about Moses. It is a different, easier way to enjoy the chapel where conclaves are held to choose the next pope and St. Peter's Basilica without leaving home. Third station, Jesus is taken before Caiaphas. Jesus is accused of blasphemy by Caiaphas. Lord Jesus, why is it so hard for us to believe that not only did you perform miracles when you walked with your disciples, but that you continue to perform miracles in our midst? Jesus, we believe you are the Savior, the Son of God. Help our unbelief. As we visit St. Nicholas Roman Catholic Cathedral in Kyiv, let us remember the Ukrainian and Russian people who have died from the conflict with Russia and those suffering because of this war. The elaborate towers and spires, the majestic rose window above the central entrance. This is the St. Nicholas Roman Catholic Church. These elements of the Gothic architectural style were added by the 19th to 20th century Kyiv architect Horodetsky. Saints and gargoyles guard the house of God. All of them were created by the famed Italian-born Ukrainian sculptor Emilio Sala, according to Horodetsky's sketches. Instead of stone, they were poured from concrete. The head of the Museum of Kiev History, Ludmila Moroz, says this was unusual for the time. Cement and concrete were new materials in the 20th century. Horodetsky was then a co-owner of a concrete plant. By applying concrete in the decoration of the facade of the church, the architects showed the advantage of this material. The beautiful church became an advertisement for the building material, which was not yet widespread. Horodetsky and the church he built occupy a special place in the Museum of Kiev history for their originality and innovation. Horodetsky liked to tame difficult landscapes. That's how he viewed the land plot where the church was going to be built. Horodetsky came up with a breakthrough engineering decision. Concrete board piles were used during the construction of St. Nicholas Church in Kiev for the first time in Europe. The building got a strong foundation, despite unstable grounds. The usual ribbon foundation could not endure the weight of such a high and massive structure. 
When the Bolsheviks came to power in Kiev, the church was shuttered. In the 1930s, it was used as a storage facility. Just a few years later, it was damaged by artillery shelling during World War II, but survived. In the 1970s, the church was transformed again, this time to a concert hall for organ and chamber music. When in 1970 the decision was made to create a national organ and chamber music house in Kiev, the restoration was done according to the old drawings. Despite the renovations, the original appearance of the church facade has been retained. Inside, however, the altar is gone. In its place stands a pipe organ. It's a point of pride for the musicians who use it. The sound generating part of the organ is the pipes. The one you see on the facade is just one out of 55. One of the smallest pipes has a height of 13 millimeters. Its sound is on the verge of human hearing range. It's almost ultrasound. The biggest wooden pipe is six meters high. Its sound is already felt as a vibration. Church services for the Roman Catholic community were resumed at the church in the beginning of the 1990s. In 2001, Pope John Paul II visited the church during his visit to Kiev. Since its very beginnings as an architectural masterpiece, St. Nicholas Church has been uniting faith and art. In the afternoon here, the spirit is stirred by God's word and in the evenings by masterpieces of organ music. Cuarta estación, Jesús es llevado ante Pilato. Pilato conocía solo la verdad de la ventaja política. No podía entender la verdad de la que Jesús hablaba. Señor Jesús, ayúdanos a buscar siempre tu verdad y a vivirla. Let us travel to the Holy Land, to the Church of the Holy Sepulchre of Jerusalem. This church holds both the site of the crucifixion of Jesus and the burial tomb. Greetings to us, pilgrims and followers from all over the world. I'm standing in the holiest site in the Christianity, the Church of the Holy Sepulchre, which in our mother tongue language, we call it the Church of al qiyami which has been the resurrection. Behind me, you can see the edicola, which is the chapel of the sepulchre, which is, consists of two rooms. One of them is called the angel room. And over there, there's a fragment of one of the small piece of the rolling stone that used to block the entrance of the tomb. The inner one is the tomb itself, where there is a stone bench. That's the place where they laid the body of the Christ for three days. We are on the Golgotha. This is the place where Jesus was crucified. I'm standing on the place where he was nailed on the cross. Behind me, you can see the statue of the Blessed Mother and the crucifixion place. So the Church of the Holy Sepulchre was built covering two important sites, the Golgotha and the sepulchre itself. This is Adam Chapel. And behind the window, you can see part of the Golgotha bedrock. In the church tradition, Adam was buried in the foot of the Calvary. And when Jesus died on the cross, his blood touched Adam's skull and it washed Adam and the human race from the original sin. This is the anointing stone. When they brought the body of Jesus from the Golgotha, they laid the body on this stone. They anointed the body and then they wrapped the body with a linen shroud. And from here, with a small funeral procession, they took the body all the way inside the tomb. Since the past 35 years, the two six pilgrims celebrated Masses inside the church holding and offering their petitions and intentions. And we believe that those days will be back soon. And with your passion of the word and our knowledge of the land, together we will follow the footstep of Jesus until the coming of that day. We will keep you in our prayer. We will hold your petitions and intentions in the altars of the Holy Land churches. Stay safe. God bless you and meet you in the Holy Land. Fifth station, Jesus is taken before Herod. Herod was anxious to see and hear Jesus, but Herod expected a show. 
not someone who could save him from his sins. Lord Jesus, help us to confess our sins regularly. From the Holy Sepulchre, we travel to St. Sebastian Basilica in Manila. St. Sebastian holds the first image of Our Lady of Mount Carmel. I'm Father Antonio Lipchaipo, a member of the Gustinian Recollects here in St. Sebastian Parish. I'm a member of the community. There are 11 of us here, 11 priests. I have been a priest for almost 30 years. And uh, since I was a young priest, it was always my dream to be able to be assigned, not only to be assigned here in this church, but to say Mass, to be the main celebrant of a Mass inside this very beautiful church. And uh, that's why we're inviting every everybody who are watching this, this video to see the inside. Because I know there are a lot of people already, even the Filipinos, have seen the Basilica from the outside only, but they, they have not entered the Basilica yet. It is a totally different story inside the church. Located in the district of Quiapo, right in the heart of the city of Manila, the Basilica first opened its doors in 1891. But the history of San Sebastian goes back to as early as 1621. It was the year that our recollect predecessors constructed the first San Sebastian on this very site. Four other San Sebastians were destroyed by war, fire, calamity, until our recollect predecessors commissioned a design for a unique all-metal church. This is the San Sebastian Basilica that you see now. It is the fifth and designed to be the best version of San Sebastian, a recollect legacy born from resilience so we can continue to serve our duty to maintain the church as a shrine to the country's first image of Our Lady of Mount Carmel. Stepping inside the Basilica is like stepping back in time. You are transported to 19th century Manila. Because much of the interior was left unchanged over the years, what you are seeing now is also what the residents of Manila first saw when the doors opened for the first time in 1891. Right ahead is the wooden structure that we call the retablo. It's the first Carmelite image in the country. Our Lady of Mount Carmel de San Sebastian who is over 400 years old. Right above us are vaulted ceilings in the Gothic style. Their high arches immediately draw the eyes towards and give us the feeling of being surrounded by the divine. Our recollect predecessors wanted a resilient church made of metal, but it was faith that was going to clothe it because every inch of metal surface was painted to look like stone taking after the old stone churches in the Philippines and the image of stone in the Bible. The ceiling was painted to look like four jasper and the walls like four marble. It was Filipino artistry that clothed the metal in art. A whole class of Filipino art students from the Academia de Debujo e Pintura, the first art school in the country, hand-painted over 140 figural paintings of different saints and doctors of the church. They were all done in the trompe l'oeil style, a French technique which means to trick the eye. Each of the figural paintings were painstakingly designed to look three-dimensional and realistic. But the Basilica's crowning glory is its dome, where many of the figural paintings of saints watch over the main altar from their high niches. While the beauty of San Sebastian speaks for itself, invisible to most eyes are the dangers faced today by this all-metal dome. Leaks throughout the church also develop over time letting in volumes of rainwater that damage both the art and the metal. Rust threatens to permanently damage the structure. It's corroding through the metal of the dome and the replaceable paintings housed there. Some cast iron elements have also started to loosen and fall, threatening even the lives of the community 
that serve the church. We are once again marrying faith and science by introducing St. Sebastian Basilica to a larger audience together with SciR. I am inviting you to join us, the Order of Augustinian Recollects, San Sebastian Conservation Foundation, and the local community we serve, to be a part of history and to protect this church so that future generations can experience this authentically Filipino legacy of resilience. Sexta estación, Jesús es llevado de nuevo ante Pilato. Pilato reconoció que Jesús era un hombre inocente, arrestado por el miedo de las autoridades judías. Aún así, Pilato mandó crucificar a Jesús. Señor Jesús, a veces es más fácil dejar que la gente inocente cargue con nuestros enojos o nuestras culpas. Ayúdanos a levantar nuestra voz en defensa de los inocentes y de los que no tienen voz. Our last stop is to the Basilica of Our Lady of Guadalupe in Mexico City. There are multiple churches in close proximity to each other. The oldest of the churches is the small church on Tepeac Hill, where St. Juan Diego encountered the Blessed Mother. A much larger basilica was then built. Unfortunately, the foundation to this basilica was sinking, so a new, modern, and even larger basilica was built. It is in this new basilica that the miraculous image of Our Lady of Guadalupe is displayed. The image of the Blessed Mother withstood a bomb blast during the anti-Catholic movement in the 1920s that bent a large crucifix and caused other damage. Thousands attend the celebration of Our Lady of Guadalupe each December 12th. In the north of Mexico City, you'll find one of the most important pilgrimage sites in Catholicism, Basilica de Nuestra Señora de Guadalupe. It's one of the most visited Catholic shrines in the world, with millions of people visiting each year. Back in 1531, Our Lady of Guadalupe appeared before a peasant named Juan Diego and told him to build a church. The Spanish bishop did not believe the man and said he required proof. Juan Diego returned to the Virgin and she told him to pick roses and carried them in his cloak. Even though it was winter, flowers grew at his feet. When Juan Diego went to show the flowers to the bishop, an icon of the Virgin appeared on his cloak. It was ordered that a church be built at once. This story was used by Spanish missionaries to convert millions of people to Catholicism. The cloak is still displayed here, and Our Lady of Guadalupe has been the patroness of the Americas since 1946. Juan Diego was also canonized in 2002, making him the first indigenous American saint. The ancient basilica still stands, but after its foundations began sinking, it was deemed too dangerous for the huge congregation. You can still go in and look around though. modern basilica was built. It can hold thousands of people and is always busy. Seventh station, Jesus is given the crown of thorns and led to his crucifixion. The soldiers shoved a crown of thorns into Jesus' head, mocked him, and beat him. Sometimes we have mocked God and his promises. We have made cruel jokes about his ministers. Help us, Lord Jesus, to see you in our brothers and sisters so that we might treat them with the dignity and, and respect that they deserve. Lord Jesus, Having traveled to seven churches to be with you through your arrest and torture, we give you thanks for your love for us. Help us to love you more and desire to suffer with you and for you. We pray this through the intercession of your sorrowful mother, Mary. <laughs> 